At this point, we've discussed translation and rotation of plane rigid bodies. So we're going to conclude our discussion of our three types of motion that we're going to be looking at by talking about general plane motion. So general plane motion occurs when an object has a rotation and a translation simultaneously. So I'll link those two videos below where we cover these topics because they're pretty important to understand when approaching these hybrid types of problems. So our general plane motion you can see it is an example in this picture we have. We have a wheel and it's obviously rotating, but it's also being pulled straight across. So here's an example of general plane motion. And we're gonna write out our procedure for how we're gonna approach these problems. But in general, we're gonna use a point P on our plane rigid body undergoing our rectilinear translation. And then we're gonna relate that point P to our angular velocity and our angular acceleration of a line within the body. In short, this is our procedure for how we're going to go about solving these general plane motion problems. So really quickly, I just want to flash on the screen here some important equations that we're going to use. So our relative velocity and acceleration analysis is going to look like this. So here we have two equations for our acceleration and we have two equations for our velocity. And you're gonna see us using these equations in our example problems that we're gonna do. And I've also included here a little aside. So if you have a disc that's ever rolling without slipping, we can use these equations for our velocity and our acceleration. So let's start by looking at an example now that we know what our procedure is. So in this problem, we have a slider block C moving at VC equals three meters per second. And we want to find the angular velocity of BC and the crank AB at the instant shown. So I've gone ahead now and I've drawn out our sketches for AB and BC. So I've done that off camera so you didn't have to watch me struggle through drawing these. But this is basically just a quick diagram showing all of our velocities and our angular velocities and how they're acting and our angles. So you can see also we have our RB and our RB of C that is shown. And we're going to use those because with these types of problems, we're often going to rely on what we know about relative motion. So let's start by looking at what we know. So for VC at least, we know that equals three meters per second and it's going down. So that's going to be in our J direction. VB is going to be a little more complicated. We're going to use what we know about our rotation to say that VB can be written as omega AB cross RB. So let's plug that in. So we'll say negative omega AB K cross 0 0.5 cosine of 60 degrees I plus 0 0.5 sine of 60 degrees J. And we can write that even simpler by saying VB is going to be equal to 0 0.4 Three, three, omega a b i minus zero point two five omega a b j. Now we can plug this in for what we have above. So we know v b and v c. So we can say v b equals. So we're going to plug in. So we're going to say zero point four three three omega a b i and what we know for our v c negative three j plus now we're going to do our cross product so Cross. 
So that is going to complete our vector relative velocity equation. And we can simplify this one step further to say And that will allow us to start solving for these angular velocities. So if we equate our i components, we're going to say 0 0.433 omega ab equals 0 0.707 omega bc. And equating our j components will give us negative 0.25 omega ab equals 0 0.707 omega bc minus 3. So solving for this is going to give us omega ab value of 4.4 radians per second and an omega bc value of 2.7 radians per second. So this is going to be our final answer, and as you can see, we used our translation equation, so we used our relative motion, and we also did, you know, some rotation equations here to solve for VB, and then we combined them together. We did use a little bit of our geometry and our trig using our angles, so that was allowing us to relate our components. And at the end, we got our angular velocities for AB and BC. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps support my channel and helps me continue making videos for you guys. I'll see you next time.